Hello, welcome back to Ken O'Connor Racing. Uh, I'm going to shoot this video as fast as I can because um, I got an email the other day from somebody who watches a bunch of my YouTube videos and he said, Can you talk too much? And um, I probably do, but so I'm going to try and uh, put a lid on it. But what we're going to do is we're going to put an entire blaster engine together. I did have some other stuff up, but and I've seen a bunch of these. I don't think, in my opinion, any of them, including my own, are complete. So we're not going to go through the cleaning and disassembly and all the other happy stuff. I'm just going to show you how to get one of these together and do it. You know, we, I'm sure we do it different than anybody else, but I'm going to show you how we do it. And I think it's probably the best way you can do it. So we're going to start with this bearing right here. Uh, it's one of your transmission bearings. And what happens is this bearing, I did 55 blaster motors last year. And I can tell you half of the time this bearing has pushed out in this direction. So what you want to do is just get a soft punch. I actually use a lot of uh, Delrin and stuff in here and get it from the other side, drive this bearing out, and then uh, we're going to put some green Loctite. Don't get it inside the bearing, but we're going to put some green Loctite around the outside of it and then set this bearing in. Okay, I got that bearing in there and that's the first thing we're going to take care of. These, the guy that owns this engine wins first place for the dirtiest cases that have ever come through this shop. It used to be my buddy Ark with that nasty Pennsylvania stuff they get all over it, but I don't know what the hell was on this, but these were nasty to clean, and uh, thank God we got that ultrasonic cleaner, so uh, I cannot stress cleanliness enough. Nothing can be too clean. It's impossible to make something too clean. So this went through multi-stages. I use a chemical called uh, Aussie Juice, believe it or not. It's about a hundred bucks for five uh, gallons of it. That's the first step. We soak the cases in that for a couple of hours, take them off, uh, hit them with a brush, a, a brass brush, and then uh, the, into the ultrasonic cleaner. We rinse them, put them in the ultrasonic cleaner, run them for about 30 minutes each, take them out, uh, rinse them again in the Aussie clean, and then um, some, water, uh, some water after that, and then brake cleaner. And at that point, everything's pretty clean. The next thing we did is uh, we went ahead and lapped both of these cases, make sure everything's flat. And if you're cleaning stuff with water or anything that um, we use, Dawn and water in the ultrasonic cleaner, and a little bit of mineral spirits, and obviously that can make some stuff rust. So if you're doing anything like that, using any kind of water solution, make sure you keep these bearings lubed all the time. Every time you blow them off, throw some oil on them so nothing bad happens. But um, you want to get your cases clean. That's the first step. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and sweat these in. I do have a video where I show you how to do it. I'm not going to do it on camera, but all I'm doing is I'm going to use a uh, infrared heat gauge. I'm going to heat this part of the case up to 235 degrees, and I'll measure that. I'm going to just do it with uh, the torch, map gas, and um, monitor temperature. Once I hit that temperature, the bearing just drops in. Never pound a bearing in. If you're pounding bearings into these cases, Stop what you're doing, back away from your bench, put all your tools away, and call me. And um, I'll show you how to do it, or I'll tell you, or I'll definitely um, point you to this video. But that's the next thing, we're going to get the main bearings in. Okay, the, the purpose of these videos is really for me to just give you the best advice I can possibly give you. And a lot of people don't take it, they, you know, they know more than we do, that's fine. But a uh, very important piece of advice, advice. Koyo. Don't screw around with Chinese bearings. Don't start reinventing the wheel. Coil bearings, I have never, never had a main bearing premature failure. Use OEM bearings. Uh, you can save a little bit of money on them if you don't want to go to the dealership, which is where I get most of mine. But Weisco sells them too. Weisco bearings, at least for these blasters. Um, when they come in, if I order bearings from Weisco, they're coil bearings and that's fine. Uh, use the uh, OEM bearings. Get good bearings. Don't try to save money here. Got the bearings in. We're going to put in the gudgeon pins or dowel pins, whatever you want to call them. Uh, make sure there's no burrs on them. Make sure they're clean. They, they should drop in. You shouldn't have to pound these things in. If you're getting resistance and you got to clean your holes out, you got to clean your pins, do something. But uh, the alignment pins, one goes here, the other goes here. Dowel pins are in. Next thing we're going to do is put our new crankshaft in. Um, I'll give you some advice on the crankshafts too. I like using the OEM Yamaha webs in rebuilding your stock crankshaft. Uh, so that's important. Don't pound these things out. There's tools and pullers. You can get them out without ever touching it with a hammer. But uh, I like Pro-X rods. I get the Pro-X rod kit. This one happens to be a hot rod. And uh, that, that's fine too as far as I'm concerned. There's certain brands I won't use, but those two I'll use. Um, right now, Pro-X, uh, year 2012, I'm being told that I can't get a rod kit right now until January. And these, those come from Europe. Uh, but I love Pro-X rods, but right now on the blaster they're out, so I got the hot rods going in there. 
we're going to assemble the engine from the stator side out. All right, so if you're sitting on your quad, this is the left side of the engine. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to drop the crank into the main bearing. Um, don't oil this bearing yet. Leave it just like it is. What we're going to do is we're going to heat the inner race, but I'm going to do this with a piece of steel. I'm going to actually heat the steel, get that to the temperature that I want, and then drop the steel on top of this. What that's going to do is slightly swell the inner race of this bearing, and the crankshaft's going to just fall right in. So next step is let's get the crankshaft in. All right, here's the uh, piece that I use. I've been using this thing for a long time. And again, map gas. I'm going to heat this up around 250 degrees. I'm just going a slow circle. Then I'm going to drop this on the inner race of the bearing. Okay, this shot, we've got this nice and hot where I want it. And what I'm going to do is just put slight pressure on this. This bearing's not moving, this has done its job. And again, it's just slight, slight, slight resistance, and you're not damaging this bearing. But what that's going to do is eliminate any pulling that we need to do. Um, it's going to eliminate a tusk, uh, you know, the tusk puller kit. You don't need that to do this. I don't own one, I've never had one. But uh, I'll show you how we drop this in. I'm going to have my camera lady pull that off. And that's it, just hold it there, no stress on the bearing, bang, just goes right in. Just let it sit there, let everything cool off and acclimate back to room temperature. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to throw our transmission in. And this is where a lot of people get confused. I'm going to show you a really easy way to do this. Um, I'm going to lube all of the transmission bearings. Again, remember, that crank bearing is not oiled yet, and that's fine. So I use these little containers here, and this is just 30 weight motor oil. These three bearings lubed up, a little bit in here. You just take your counterbalance shaft. Uh, this was lightened in here. And keep in mind, everything that I'm showing you here, everything was done in-house. We don't send anything out. Everything gets done right in here. Okay, real quick, these are the uh, components for your transmission. Uh, you've got three shift forks, and they're numbered. One, two, three. Um, two gear clusters, you've got your shift cam uh, with the shift star mod we go ahead and we do that on every single end, I don't even charge you for that, we just do it automatically and uh, these are the uh, shafts that the forks ride on and we go ahead and we polish this and again I mean I don't charge anybody for that, it's just you know part of a good build and we do that and I'll show you how to, uh, we're going to get this tranny together next. Alright, this is extremely easy. Don't be afraid of this. There's nothing to this. This is how I like to do it. Take your two gear clusters, line them up just like this. This is what your sprocket rides on. And just take them, drop them right in. Just like that. If they don't turn, that's natural. You have no forks on here, so don't mess around with that, but that's the first step. Here's the shift forks. These are going in next. See the numbers? One, two, three. Here's how it works. Number one fork goes in first. If you look at these gears, there's a little slot that it goes into. Number two goes in next. Number two goes over here. Same thing. It's got a slot. Number three goes in last, and it goes in this slot. I've got my forks installed. Again, very simple. This is number one with the number facing to the left side of the engine or the quad if you're sitting on it. So number one is here, number two is here, and number three is over here. And just leave those in there, shove them all the way on this side to the left, this side to the right, and just leave them like that. Next thing we're going to do is just install the cam. Just put that in there, just like that. It's a shot of the uh, shift cam, and you're going to see it's got three grooves in it. Number one, guess which fork goes in there? You got it, number one. Number two goes in here. Number three goes in here. Got our forks aligned, and, and just so you know, when you slide these forks into this cam, you're going to have to pick up on these, pick them up or move them around until they get into the correct groove. It is absolutely imperative. I read all the time about, yeah, I just did my blaster and now it won't shift. It's because you did something wrong in here. Pay attention to what you're doing. You're not going to make any mistakes. Absolutely imperative. They have to be in the right spot, the forks. They have to be in the right groove where I see everybody screw up. 
is they have to be inside the slots in the transmission. So put that together correctly and you won't have any problems. Next thing we do, now that we've got everything in, is I'm just going to take my bottle of 30 weight and just shoot a little oil on these forks for now. And then put the shafts in. You have a long shaft with a clip. This one goes on this side with the clip facing up. And this one doesn't matter. You can put it in any way you want. Uh, we polish these so um, that just aids in the shift and keeps everything a little bit more lubricated and makes it easier to shift along with the shift star mod. Got my shafts all put in here. Um, if you look at your, your shift star, you know, everything's got a bump on it except this part of it is recessed. If you line this up approximately right here with this bolt, that's going to be neutral. You can tell it's in neutral because you hold this shaft, turn this one, and this one's not going to engage. First gear is right over here. So now everything's going to lock up and turn. Next thing you want to do is you want to bench shift this. You want to sh and it, it doesn't have to be really easy, but it has to go through all six gears. Uh, it's not going to be easy because you're not supporting it over here. So you're going to have to jockey things around a little bit. But what you want to do at this point, we're in first gear, is rotate this while turning this. And just make sure that you get, as you can see, you know, you got to mess around with stuff a little bit. But it'll definitely move. If it does this on the bench and goes all the way around just like that I have all my gears so now we're all set with our transmission we know that's right we're gonna get ready to go ahead and put it together next transmissions in we checked it functioning properly I uh, went ahead I took my little oil dispenser here and put a bunch of oil in here put a bunch on the cams um, loaded all of this up you, you're not gonna have a problem you can't use too much oil in here it's just gonna drip out on the bench anyway so get all of that lubed up next thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna take a paper towel and uh, you can use a rag whatever I use a paper towel I'm just gonna take a paper towel shoot some brake clean on it and I'm gonna pat this area just cuz we've been messing around in here I wanna make sure that everything is grease and oil free so I'm just gonna take that precaution do that to both cases went ahead get the face of this nice and clean this is where your uh, case bond comes in and I'm gonna expel a myth about case bond you don't need to put it on thick. Um, you put it on thick, I mean it's so thin when these things come together and this stuff never hardens actually, it stays rubbery. Anything that it doesn't need to seal itself is coming out here or even worse, it's going in here. I'm not so concerned about it being in the transmission. You know, obviously you don't want it in there, but if it gets in the tranny, the tranny's going to grind it up, it's not going to be a big deal. You get a loose piece of this floating around in here and uh, that decides to come up, go through a transfer port get hooked on a piston, you're going you're gonna to have a big mess and this business is all about no chances. Doctors have malpractice insurance, I don't. They're allowed to make a mistake, I'm not. Um, building engines is all about perfection, so you know, after doing so many of them we found things that, that just work better than others. I like to use a little acid brush, you can get these from Harbor Freight. You get them in Napa, we found that Napa they were, I don't know, I think I was paying a dollar nineteen a piece for them. Harbor Freight for four bucks you get like fifty of them, so these work well and uh, whatever you're going to use for a bond, I use a 1104 case bond, 1194 case bond made by 3 bond, it's another product by 3 bond, 1184 case bond. I think they're gonna, I think they're changing for some kind of EPA laws or whatever but uh, the 1104 and the 1194 is getting harder to find, 1184 if you order 1194 they send you 1184 so I think they're just changing their product um, uh, the other things you can use, uh, the Yama Bond, obviously that's a factory stuff. It's expensive. I mean, the other stuff is readily available. So I'm going to put some 1194 on here. And the way we do this is I just put a little bit on and just put it on and start spreading this stuff out as thin as you can possibly get it and still have adhesion and coverage. So you just want to put it on and start spreading it out. And I'm going to do that to the whole case.